Hello, welcome to the Taz Henry Channel Show. It's nice to see you here. Thank you for coming. Uh, welcome to the Taz Henry Channel Show, episode number 12. Um, yeah, thanks for coming. We're going to have a nice, quiet, chilled out evening. I just wanted to talk to you a lot about, well, what, I, what the title is. Uh, right, okay, first of all, before I start, okay, before I begin this episode, I just want to say from the outset, anything I say about antidepressants, you must remember, I'm an idiot and I don't know anything, okay? Well, I'm not an idiot, um, but <laughs> but I'm not a doctor, okay? I'm no substitute for, for a doctor. And I've been to see a doctor about antidepressants recently and before I get into it, you know, I just want to say if you have any experiences with depression or anxiety, uh, the two situations which I manage, you need to go to see a doctor. That's where you should go to, to make final decisions on your health. Do a lot of research online, definitely. Go to appropriate sources. Try to make sure it's trusted, um, peer-reviewed, scientific information that you're getting when you learn about antidepressants. I'm just going to get into it, okay? This last few weeks, it's been since episode 11, I've, I've, I've started to come off antidepressants. Mental health issues and difficulties are so, so common. They're so massively common that I think we should just, you know, it's not just me that thinks this. I think more and more we're talking about mental health problems out in the open. And it seems to me like almost a majority of people have got some experience with mental health issues, some mental health problems. Um, yeah, it's something that everybody can benefit from learning about. So I'm sharing my experiences here. I certainly don't think I'm special uh, in this. I don't think, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get your sympathy. I think the modern world is a very crazy, crazy place and we've we've largely um, swept uh, a lot of religion under the rug and we don't have the same kind of community anymore and we don't have the same kind of sense of unity in our in our culture at the moment now because of the we're in the sort of wild west early era of the internet and um, we don't have a kind of uh, a narrative or a shared um, I think Yuval Noah Harari in his book Sapiens um, talks about how one of the great gifts of humanity is that we can believe in a shared fiction, a shared narrative, and we can organise ourselves into gigantic groups, and we can, we can do that, um, as a result of having a shared believing in shared fictions, one example of which is money. Money is a fictional thing. Um, it's just a bunch of numbers, but we have chosen to all, we all believe in, in it as a real thing. Okay. So, um, and because we all believe in it and we all believe it. So we make it so, um, we give it the value that we choose to believe that it has. Okay. So we can do that. Animals don't have money. Um, you know, maybe they would like to have some money, but, but. We're probably not going to give them any money anytime soon unless they do some work. And um, my cat's not going to do any work anytime soon. This is her. Okay. It became apparent to me that I really, really needed to get some help and I needed to prioritise this help because things were very, things were very, very bad. I think it's important for us to share stuff like this. So I'm not, I don't, I don't care that I'm sharing this. Um, I hope it helps you. Um, I hope this, yeah, I just got to a very, very low point. So anyway, I got some help and I prioritised it and I spent um, a significant amount of my um, income from being a teaching assistant on getting some counselling. And I had cognitive behavioural therapy every two or three weeks um, for two and a half years, basically. Uh, I think I stopped for a short time in the middle of it for a good reason. So that was in 2015. In 20... And things got better and better and better. And I realised what, what, what I learnt from my counsellor, who was brilliant, is that I had 
no self-esteem basically I just didn't have any I started consciously trying to improve my self-esteem and my life's been getting better ever since but in 2018 I was 36 years old and I went to the doctor and I said look I've done all this counseling I've moved on with my life I just said to the doctor look I've been working on my mental health I've been working really hard on my mental health and I've got to a point where I know that I've got further to go in terms of my real life. I've got to move my career on. I've got to find somewhere else to live. I've got to a point where I was happy, but I'm not happy. But I also know that there's not really much in terms of counselling I can do. Um, so I think I should go on antidepressants, maybe. The doctor said, yeah, OK, I think I think you're probably right. I think we'll try you on some antidepressants. So I went on these, on sertraline, 100 milligrams, and they had an immediate effect and I'm, I could sense it within an, within an hour, maybe two hours. I could feel the effects um, of them kicking in. I could feel a sort of rush in my brain. So I think the way I could describe it is without antidepressants, I feel like my skin is too thin, like I've got holes. It's like metaphorically, I've got like, I'm full of holes like Swiss cheese and the wind just goes straight through me and like the day like the the challenges of the day just get straight through go straight through me and the dirt and the grit gets inside and like the kind of struggles of life get through me but on antidepressants on sertraline or zoloft as they also call it it's like a kind of skin grow like a a layer of skin grows over your mind like a little blanket goes over your brain and it's like you you know you're still you you're still aware of everything that's going on but but you just feel a bit like you're insulated from from like the difficulties and challenges of life and you've got that much more ability to to be able to like to get up and go to work or to face challenging you know to get up and go to work every day when you're feeling when you're struggling and you hate it it doesn't it's not destroying you. It's not, it's not, you don't feel like you're being sanded down to nothing. You feel like you're stronger and more sturdy and capable of letting things bounce off you. You feel bouncier. I suppose that's, yeah, that's a way of looking at it. One thing I noticed was it, it made me want to drink alcohol more, which I never really had before, really that badly, but it made me feel sort of like I could drink more alcohol and feel okay with the hangovers and stuff and it made me want to drink more and I did get more of an alcohol problem after I first started it but anyway like I say I don't drink anymore and to summarize being on sertraline the five years that I've been on sertraline I've figured out some of the things that might have caused me to have low self-esteem or made me likely to develop it worse to for it to get worse when I got older that started when I was a child and then I had some sort of childhood -ish traumas, difficulties, challenges, like nearly every single human on earth has some sort of childhood difficulties and traumas and trials and tribulations. I had some too and um, I'm not dramatising it, I'm just saying this is what happened, you know, so some things were shit, some things were great, you know, but the things that were bad led me to have low self-esteem and led me to be prone to having low self-esteem as I got older. In the five years since I've been on sertraline, I've got my own place, I've retrained and got a new job, I've overcome my procrastination, I've recorded and produced and made my first album. Okay, and I'm now in a point at a point where I'm, I'm habitually doing things that are good for me, I've quit drinking, okay? So I'm a completely clean and sober person, four months in now. There might be the odd thing that pops up and go, oh, I forgot about that, but the general core nugget of trauma in my brain, right? I've identified it, I've found it, and I've held it up into the light, and I've challenged, challenged the reality of it and processed it and um, recognised deeply that that kind of thing won't happen to me again and can't happen to me again and that I'm 
I'm in charge of my life and myself now and no one else is and and all that kind of stuff you know I've processed that I've reconnected with somebody who I lost contact with when I was 20 years old in a way that it broke my heart and I never got over it until I reconnected with her I needed to reconnect with her it was sort of it was like an echo of my childhood in a way and it it was just um I felt so deeply for her and losing her was like confirmation of all of the things that were hurting me still from my childhood so it was um so I, I reconnected with with this person and we became really good friends and it was fantastic to get to to speak to her in, in a way we spoke all about this thing this kind of thing and it changed my life I, I really I really feel like I've I managed to do things since I've not because of the sertraline but perhaps it really helped I've moved for and it, I think the sertraline did help it helped basically and I've managed to move my life forward in so many great ways so anyway a few weeks ago I ran out of sertraline and I'd been talking to some to the guys at work and and we were talking about antidepressants we were talking about all kinds of things and I'd read online about how antidepressants or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors SSRIs as it's a class of drugs SSRIs it's a type of antidepressant and it's the type I was on I am on still um we were talking at work about how that because I just found out as well online that that these things can affect your erectile function as a man and as a human they can affect your your libido and your your sexiness basically of your um desire to procreate and practice procreation practice procreation and um I started to think about like when I first started them and I remembered I did notice a bit of a kind of dampening down of things in the old um, like joy department and it did feel a bit like oh yeah but I kind of thought well you know it's just a side effect it'll pass and I forgot about it and I did forget about it and it didn't ruin everything things still worked so I kind of got used to it and it, and it wasn't that bad for me it wasn't as bad as I've read it can be but anyway I, I thought well, actually, I don't, I've been thinking in the last few years, well, I don't really need antidepressants anymore, do I? You know, maybe, maybe they're kind of a good boost, but once I'd heard about or remembered about the whole effect it has on your kind of sexual function and your sexual drive and stuff like that and your sexual f sensations and stuff, you know, I thought, you know what? If I don't need to be on them, I don't want to be on them. If, if I can, if can at all get off these, I think I'm going to. And then I ran out and then five days later, and so I had five days of cold turkey. And I know that that's bad. You shouldn't do that. You should not come off antidepressants, I'll say it again, without a doctor's help. You shouldn't go on them without doctor's help and you shouldn't come off them without doctor's help. And there's very good reasons for that, okay? Now, it, because it hurts your brain, it's hard to come off them and you can get like a this there's bad things that can happen right so i had five days without sertraline it was wild it was wild and here's a list of the side effects okay <clears throat> the the side effects of withdrawal from ssris can include there, there might be more so more but these are the ones i wrote down flu-like symptoms dizziness or vertigo electric shock sensations in the head, the zaps, strange dreams, balance involuntary movement issues, tinnitus, anxiety, crying spells, depression, um, agitation, mood swings, suicidal thoughts, and yeah, so the ones I I struggled with, I noticed straight away was, um, I was getting slight vertigo, like if I moved my head too quickly, it would be like, you know, I'd feel a bit like crumbs, but it wasn't, it wasn't really bad. It didn't affect my driving or anything like that. Um, I was getting, I think it was like 
tiny electric shock sensations in the head. It was like miniature zaps. Okay, it's like okay, some that kind of thing. But it wasn't. It wasn't like which I've heard. I've heard um, of people having really extreme zaps, and it wasn't like that. But I, I noticed that I, I, I started to be really itchy, like my whole body's become really itchy. Um, and the other thing I've noticed is rage. Now, angst, depression has often been referred to as rage turned inwards, anger turned inwards. If you're not assertive, if you have low self-esteem, for example, and you are taking a lot of shit off people for not moving things forward or not doing things, procrastinating and stuff like that, it can make you very angry and, and angry at yourself. And anyway, Yeah, so anyway, I noticed that I was getting really, really angry and latching onto things that were sort of really mad. I went to see the doctor uh, two or three days later. So, but on the fifth day, the sixth day, I started taking sertraline again. And immediately I started to feel a bit better, but I, but I wasn't taking 100 milligrams like I used to. I was taking 50 milligrams and that is what I'm going to be taking for the next six more weeks. And then I'm going to try and just stop them straight away. And that's how the doctor recommended it. And then my doctor, he's on them as well. <laughs> so like I say, many of us, perhaps I don't know how many, but there's a huge, huge amount of us who are on antidepressants or certainly who know about depression firsthand and anxiety and stuff like that. So so I just hope this helps, OK, because I'm not alone in this. OK, and I'm certainly not embarrassed, but I'm also not trying to get a cookie or elicit sympathy or anything like that. I'm just trying to share the truth with you, my truth about this, my experiences. OK. So after five days, I went back on the sertraline, but only on 50 milligrams, which is half of what I was on before. And things got a bit better. OK, so I suddenly noticed that kind of blanket over my mind was back. You know, I could think the same. I didn't know. I've not had any problems with thinking or cognition or understanding of things and or anything like that from taking it. All I notice is that when I'm on it, I just feel a bit sturdier. I feel a bit more less frail emotionally i feel less vulnerable and um and but slowly you know that that 50 milligrams my body starting to realize that's not what it's used to i've been for five years i've been taking 100 milligrams every day and i've been pretty good at making sure i've taken it so i am starting to experience it as i come as the sort of as the amount of it in my body goes down over the week slowly um Apparently sertraline is stored even in, it can get into your fat cells and so it can live on, it can stay in your body for quite a long time as before it finally runs out. So anyway, I'm back on the sertraline and now it's been a couple of weeks or a week and I'm just very itchy and very scratchy and I feel a bit more uh, sturdy again. I feel a bit more solid and less vulnerable, but <laughs> it's been it's wild it's wild i feel wild i mix i feel it's good in a way that that blanket is coming off um at first it came it was came right off when i went cold turkey but it's back on again a bit and what i realized is, is it's going to be of a benefit to take it off slowly but my emotions basically without sertraline my emotions my brain is there and my emotions are like right, you know, I'm right there. I'm, I'm looking at it and my emotions are raw and real and vivid. And things that bother me, bother me. And um, like I was at work and I'm not saying these, I, I like these guys. I, I, I The two guys I'm about to talk about, I like them. Okay, I don't have any issues with them. It's not personal. Everyone has different priorities. I'm not judging. I was at the time, I was judging, but there was two guys both with vans at work and they were both idling their vans all day. And I'm very worried about the climate. And I know I'm a lorry driver and I know I lay tarmac for a living and I even eat meat sometimes, okay? So I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm part of the problem. I don't have children. I might not ever have children. I don't know, maybe I will, but, but it's looking like maybe I won't. I don't know, but... I hardly ever, if ever, fly anywhere. It's not something I normally do, flying. So there's good and there's bad. 
but I'm generally part of the problem because I'm a human being and I live on this planet and I drive lorries all day, but that kind of helps other people travel less because I'm, tra you know, just because I'm a part of the problem, it doesn't mean I'm not allowed to care about the climate. Anyway, so these guys, I was like, would you mind considering not idling your vehicles all day because of the climate, you know, and I've got asthma and, you know, and I felt like it's, I felt like it's a bit of a silly billy doing this, but I had to say something and it was really, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, this is really driving me insane. And I kind of thought, hmm, I'm getting agitated. I'm just going to have to tell them. I'm just going to have to say something. And I, I went up to them and I said something. And then one of them basically has, when, when, he, when he's around me, at least, he's like, well, you know, stand it off, you know. And, then, but, and this other guy, he did too, but he said, he basically was like, you're weird, you're crazy, mate. Okay, it's air conditioning, it's for air conditioning. And we don't like to be sweaty. And and he was this old guy and he was a bit of a dick about it. And But I said something. I felt better that I'd actually said something because a lot of the time if you want to say something and you don't say something and you keep it in, it's you that suffers. It's you that suffers. And you might be saying it to somebody who doesn't give a shit about you anyway. So ultimately, you don't need to worry about what you say to them. You've got it out. You've said the thing that you wanted to say. And anyway, I may have helped them, you know, they may have considered turning their lorries off a bit more often, at least when we're at work, you know. But anyway, um, but I, I came home feeling really defeated after that and feeling like, oh, God. The world's a mess, like pollution's a mess. And I started looking around at the world and how difficult it is. I was itching and I was getting sad and I felt like the world was falling apart. And I started to think, well, who, it doesn't matter if I die, if I die, like it's going to make the world a better place. If I never have children, it's going to make the world a better place. You know, what's the point? And, and I started to like think a bit more and more about, about these are the things basically that I've noticed. So generally speaking, I've been really, really overwhelmed and like all this stuff has been driving me absolutely crazy. And just the, I haven't been as bouncy and I haven't been as as invulnerable to, to these kind of, the kind of onslaught of news about things being bad and things going wrong and stuff like that. And I know that the news is trying to, to inflame you and enrage you because it gets more clicks that way. And I know that you need to be mindful and sit back and look, be like, Okay, so the news is the news is trying to disturb you. It's trying to upset you. Okay, it is. That's how it gets money. That's how it people get engaged with it. And whether you're in the left or in the right or somewhere in between, that's what the news is doing. It's its business model is to to wind you up. Okay, but someone at work mentioned, and I think this is because I'm overly sensitive and overly sensitized. You know, like I say, I've got itchy skin, and and things are driving me mad and I can't let go of things. And um, and it's a struggle at the moment to get by. Um, I'm being a bit more OCD and a bit more obsessive. And as you can probably tell, the news has been really getting to me a lot. And the heat wave got to me, you know, the tail end of that was, was while I was coming off um, antidepressants. But anyway, this guy at work said Seabrooks, he said that um, Seabrooks prawn cocktail flavor crisps taste like, smell like, very very smelly willies <laughs> and for some reason I saw some on the way home and I thought not smelly willies I saw Seabrook's prawn cocktail flavor loaded rings so I bought some and I was sat on the sofa the other night and like I say I never get put off my food but I opened them and I was like <laughs> and I was like no I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna back down this easily and I just I managed to get through one packet and I just, I'm not going to be able to eat any more of those because they literally, to me, they just, it's just like smelling a, an unwashed penis, a very smelly, smelly penis. <laughs> so uh, I think that's the, you know, I'm, I'm a bit hypersensitive to, to smells and stuff, perhaps at the moment. I don't even have a very good sense of smell. But, um, yeah, that's quite funny, really. But um, I'm sorry to see Brooks crisps. I'm, I'm sure most people enjoy them, but but if you do enjoy Seabrook's prawn cocktail flavor crisps, 
just don't think about smelly unwashed penises when you um, are enjoying those crisps. Just don't think about smelly, stinky, unwashed penises, okay? Because it's not gonna help. It's not gonna help you. I don't want to leave you all feeling as depressed and sad and angry as perhaps I've been over the past couple of weeks. Don't worry, like, I'm, on paper, certainly, my life is better than it's ever been, okay? It's not perfect, but I'm doing the best I can. And I'm starting to realise, I've been realising for a long time that if you just stick at it and don't, if you stick at it with life and keep going, it does get better. And coming off antidepressants is going to make the world seem worse. You've got to realise that your your the way your internal state affects how you see the external world as well. So, of course, the world's going to be a bit harsher and colder right now to me because I'm coming off antidepressants. But I want to feel things more vividly. I want to feel my emotions now. I want to really go deep into my perceptions. You know, I might be somebody who struggles, who's prone to anxiety and depression, yeah, but it doesn't mean that I'm I'm going to take antidepressants for the rest of my life. On the whole, not taking medicine is probably a good option too, but like I say, this is my individual choice what my doctor says, blah, blah, blah. Okay, don't do not do what I do, see a doctor. It might be difficult coming off the antidepressants, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. And, it, and if life becomes unbearable, I might have to go back on them, but, but I'm certainly gonna try. So this week was a bit of a heavy one, I suppose, <laughs> but I just hope it, hopefully it helped. I reserve the right to do, diff, to do what I want on this show, so. I just this is what it's been a it's been a crazy few weeks. I think this has actually been three weeks now since um my last episode. But I, I've I kind of lost the plot a bit to be fair, like you might have gathered. But I've tried to come back with um some facts and figures for you and some I don't know, some information that might be useful. But it's been lovely talking to you and thanks for hanging out and um I love you very much and I hope that this was useful and informative and um, if you're struggling it may have given you some kind of inspiration to I don't know or some something useful to think about it helps me it helps me putting it out there helps me to kind of like it's like writing helps you to kind of clarify your thoughts and distill them into some kind of like functioning knowledge I don't know but anyway you take care of yourself and I hope you're good and I hope things aren't too bad and if they are pretty rubbish just just keep on going okay because it does get better if you know what you value and what makes you happy and try and make decisions that help you and try and just develop some good positive habits and do the things which you know are good for you it will keep getting better if you just stick around and keep trying to make reasonably good decisions and good choices, things get better. The more aware you are, the more present you are, the more conscious you are of everything in this moment, including yourself, including your perceptions and your emotions and your feelings and everything you can perceive, the more awareness you have of what's going on right now. the better your life works, the better life is for you. Just take it moment by moment and and it'll be okay until you die. Okay, I'll see you next week on the Tiles Henry Channel Show. <laughs> Goodbye.